This week on Tabletop Witchcraft, we're building a tower and barracks to be played together as one intimidating building or played separately for two separate objectives. Hey there, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, we're gonna be working on this tower and barracks. A pretty impressive structure all by itself, but you might not wanna use it this way all the time. You see, I'm a firm believer in getting as much use out of one piece as you can. So why make this piece glued together so that it can't be played as separately like that? Let's say there's one night where you just want the tower. Now you can do that. And like all my other crafts, it's all playable every single level. The second level, the first as well. If you're interested in how to build these flickering LED lights, it is so simple, it's ridiculous. There'll be a link above. Check that video out at the end of this one. And obviously, the barracks here is also playable by itself. This piece right here, we remedy that simply by adding this piece in place as well. Now you got a full building all set and ready to go for another objective. So, with that, Let's grab some foam and let's get crafting. Okay, so if you want to head over to Drive Through RPG and print these plans off, you can do that over there. If not, um, the tower that we're working on here has a floor plan that's four inches by five inches wide for a playable area. And you can make the height anything you want. Uh, typically, I like to go about two and a half to three inches um, per story. So the first thing we're going to work on after we get the walls cut out is the door and uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this out of the plans and lining up the XPS on the uh, stencil there. We'll just go ahead and we'll trace out each section of this door uh, one layer at a time. Okay, then go ahead on the Proxon on a low heat, cut out um, everything that you've traced out. And you can do any design you like over the door. Uh, for this one here, I just did a couple circles. Um, and then for the wooden part of the door, we'll just go ahead and score that with an uh, X-Acto knife. And then exaggerate those lines with a pen. And then roll all of the wood with some aluminum foil for some stone texture put a link here above um, to this little tool that I made to help texture small pieces of XPS foam like this. It works really well. It works really well with green stuff. Also, if you're working on miniature bases. Okay, then uh, take your X-Acto and just cut around um, your design that you're putting over the archway. And then I like to use um, this tool right here, the sculpting tool. Um, to pop out all the pieces that we don't need and pretty much everything you see in this video um, the tools the hot glue gun um, Everything you see there'll be a link to the Amazon links in the description below if you want to grab those items So all we're doing here now is we're doing a little bit of uh, detail work around the door for some metal bracing uh, We're working on a barracks. So I want it to look real kind of uh, Sturdy so we're gonna put a bunch of metal around that and then we're going to use this uh, roller. Again, I'll put a link above a card where you can go ahead and watch a video on how to make that for some quick and easy stonework. And then just take a pen and trace out a few to define some of those lines, trace some of that stonework out. And once you have that, just uh, glue in the, uh, the stone archway and have it protrude from the face a little bit. And then set the next layer of stone flush as you can see here, it adds some um, depth to the face of the building. And now we're going to set the door back um, a little bit further than that section of stonework uh, to really make it uh, something interesting to look at. And again with that uh, foam roller, we'll go ahead and we're going to just roll out some, some more walls. And I like to use this tool every now and then just to kind of really exaggerate some of the foam 
to make some of the, the stonework stand out even more. If you don't want to pick up that tool, um, you can go ahead and just, like I'm doing here, heat up a, a pin and use that. That'll work uh, pretty decent. And again here, I'm just tracing out uh, a few lines, just trying to exaggerate those that are tying into the areas that I've uh, burned. Now sticking the walls together, I like to pin them with a toothpick and some hot glue. And we'll do the same for the top. It really locks this piece in really nice and sturdy. And now using the stencil, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to draw the outer and the inner window on the wall. And we'll cut the inner window out and pop that out with a sculpting tool. Now you want to go ahead and take an X-Acto knife and cut around the perimeter of the window down about an eighth of an inch. And then take a wood sculpting tool and pop out all of the foam around that to add a recessed look. Alright, now you're going to go ahead and just uh, melt out a little hole here. Um, as you've seen in some of my previous videos, um, to insert some magnets. Um, once you do that, a little bit of hot glue, and then insert a magnet into each section so that the uh, tower can come apart. Now we're going to work on the parapets here. Um, the design can be taken off of the plans. And on a low heat, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just cut out um, a few long strips of these parapets. And then from the peak on each side, you're going to go ahead and cut these off at an angle. Now we're going to work on the corners of uh, the tower. You're going to take an inch and a half by an inch and a half by two inch block. And you're going to make a cut like so on the proxon. And then at this angle, you're going to reproduce that same cut. And then once you have that, you're going to cut down about an inch along that line. And then cut across to pop that little square out and that will allow you to fit the uh, corner of the parapet on the tower. Okay then with a little bit of hot glue we're going to stick uh, one on each corner. And now we can cut the parapets that we made earlier to fit in between those. And you want to texture all this stuff with some aluminum foil to add that stone texture. Now we're going to cut out some small rectangles and then cut an L shape out of each one of those which will allow us to cover the corners of the tower. And you want to leave this piece right here an eighth of an inch at the top of it with no glue. That way when you pull the tower apart um, that obviously will stay with the lower half. And this will also at the same time hide the seam to the tower. Just like that. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing. You'll see I just put a little bit of glue on the base, making sure not to get any on the tower itself. That way it comes apart. And this is just to conceal the, uh, the foam base of the tower. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do a little work on this trap door here. You can see this uh, build a little bit better for the trap door in my windmill build. And if you're interested in how to make these uh, door handles, I have a whole video, I'll put a link above a card where you can watch uh, that video, an in-depth video on how to make those. Now we're just gonna put a little stone archway over each window. Okay, now we're going to work on the walls to the barracks. Same as before, we're going to just get everything pre-cut with the plans. Uh, the dimensions of the barracks are 4 inches wide by 6 inches long on the interior. 
we'll go ahead and we'll stone texture the wall on the outside and then we will roll it with our roller. And then we're gonna cut an archway out for the interior wall of the barracks. I'm gonna do all this separate, that way it's easier to paint and then we'll put it together once it's painted. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut this out with the proxon. And each half here will be one for each side of the um, barracks. And just go ahead and continue the uh, stonework onto the inside of this here. Cause you will see that uh, once it's completed. And a little stone texture with some aluminum foil. And now uh, you can line this up real easy again with the plans, but um, you're just gonna go ahead and glue all this stuff together right now for the interior and the exterior walls. And we're making it this thick so that we can have uh, a playable, I guess, kind of catwalk around the parapets on the top of the garrison or the barracks. And here we're cutting out the steps, and if you do this careful, uh, when you're done, you'll have two sets of steps, and the second set you can use later on for another build. And we're just carrying on uh, the stonework onto the face of the steps here. And then we'll glue that to the uh, wall itself. Now like we did with the first section on the tower, we're just gonna trace out the, uh, here it's gonna be like the front door or the gate to the barracks. And then we'll cut that in half because uh, we want this to be set inside of the exterior wall. And then this part you'll have to cut out with an X-Acto knife. Because uh, we're going to go ahead and put some metal bars in this section. And then we'll roll that. Again, you can see this really tight area. It's real easy to get to with this, uh, this sculpting tool. Which you'll see, again, earlier in the video, there's a link where you can check out how to make that. Where I talk about it. Uh, and then again, just like before here, we're just changing up the metal uh, supports on the doors just to make it a little different. And here we're just taking some toothpicks uh, cut to various lengths and inserting those into the foam. And those will stick right in place. You don't really even have to glue these because you're going to Mod Podge it, which is glue, and it's going to hold it in place. But if you want, you can go ahead and put a little glue, tacky glue on those. Now you can see the gate is set in from the uh, wall, and that's because we cut that in half. And now we'll go ahead and set the uh, corner, um, larger, I guess, parapets, or corner of the barracks wall in place. And here we're actually cutting out um, some supports for the parapet itself. And these are about three quarters of an inch uh, by about a half an inch wide. You'll see exactly how these go on here in a minute. Alright, now we can cut these uh, to fit. A little bit of hot glue. And that's what our parapets are going to rest on. Now here, um, we're doing this a little different. We're going to make this separate and just glue um, a little bit on each side. Uh, that way we can cut it off away from the face of the barracks so that when used with the tower we can remove that and the tower will fit flush up against the barracks. And uh, when you're not using it you can reinsert this piece um, that way you have a complete separate building um, standalone from uh, this whole unit, I guess, the barracks and the tower. Now 
Okay, so here we're just going to heat up a pin and uh, melt a little hole here so that we can glue our little magnets into place. And these will hold the, uh, the parapets in place uh, if we're using this as a separate building. So a little bit of hot glue, stick a magnet in there, some wooden uh, tweezers to do that. And I will just mark out the grid here. You don't have to be exact on the whole thing because we're going to cover up a lot of the exterior grid work, uh, or perimeter I guess I should say, uh, with the walls. But we're going to go ahead and use this roller um, to add some texture to the floor. Now this is actually my second coat of Mod Podge. You want to put um, two coats, two really good coats of Mod Podge on this because as you can see, we're going to take some super glue and we're going to add a, a muddy base to this. So we're protecting that XPS foam from the super glue with that Mod Podge layer. So just put some super glue on there, spread it around, and then with some baking soda, just sprinkle it over the top and it's going to make a really good looking um, mud base for the uh, barracks once it's complete. And after about five or ten minutes you can brush that off. And as you can see it's going to take a dry brush really well. This is the first layer. I'm doing a dark brown. And then we're going to layer that um, or dry brush that with a lighter tan. And it's going to get knocked down big time with a dark brown wash that we're going to use. And I'm actually doing a third dry brush here, an even lighter brown. And now with some Vallejo uh, brown wash, we'll go ahead and hit this whole piece up here. And then we'll give it a light dry brush um, after that's dried. You can see it's kind of like a light tan that I've used for that dry brush. Alright, now after we've Mod Podged, um, the entire piece we'll go ahead and use a little apple barrel gray for the stone structure and some burnt umber brown for the doors and uh, whatever you have for a, a like a dark metallic um, metal color for the bracing and for these uh, metal bars over the gate then I've used a very light gray uh, dry brush for the tower And our black wash is going to really knock that down. As you can see, I'm hitting it again with an even lighter color. I think this is like a Dove Gray by Folk Art. And now we'll hit it with a black wash. It's a homemade black wash. Now we're going to just hit it with uh, that Dove Gray again after that's dried for a final dry brushing. And now the doors will do a pretty heavy dry brush um, of a lighter brown. kind of want to bring the, a little bit more brown into this piece here so I brought those up with a, a lighter brown. And now some uh, black, red and brown mixed with some water um, to add some rust effect to the bars and all the metal work. And after all of that, uh, we can finally glue the piece together. As you can see, it was a lot easier to paint this separately um, and put it together afterwards. So we'll go ahead and glue all four of those walls together. And we'll go ahead now and with some toothpicks, uh, glue those around the perimeter. It'll really help to hold um, this whole piece together onto the base. Put some hot glue in there, line everything up and press it down you should be all set. And here I'm using some Vallejo thick mud. Um, since this piece is glued down and it's not coming apart I figured uh, let's add some extra mud effect. And I didn't want this part to come apart from the base because I want it to feel claustrophobic and really tight when uh, the players are in here fighting. Um, kind of help with the uh, dramatic effect I guess. Um, typically you know they'll be playing around the, the top of the perimeter of this anyway. So just carrying some of that mud effect up the stairs, just dry brush that a little bit on there. Alright, and now while that's still tacky, I'm taking some 
brown leaves and I'm going to sprinkle those around the mud and all the corners and with a little bit of just regular PVA glue put some in the corners where the leaves would kind of blow and build up stick some in the corners of the steps All right, now I'm taking some dried um, grass tufts and cutting them up and sticking them around uh, the base as well. Along the walls, I put uh, one up on the stairs, a couple in the archways. And now I'm just taking a few more leaves to the outside by the door and sticking a few of those in place. And I actually went back and touched a little bit of super glue to those as well just to kind of make sure that they don't move on me. Now we can do the wood planking around the perimeter of the parapets up top. And these are two, uh, two and a half inch planks. And you want to just stagger that pattern uh, when you put those in. And if you want to make sure you have like a, a one inch grid, you can adjust that by the nail holes that you'll put in there or by the grid pattern of the wood or even by the color if you're concerned with that. Now using a wood sculpting or a clay sculpting tool, I'm just actually putting in some individual uh, grain for each plank and a bunch of nail holes. I like the look of that better than using a wire brush, um, so I always do that when I can. And after I brought that up with a couple different layers of brown, hit it with, again with a little brown wash. And uh, as you saw earlier, for all the uh, corners of the building of the tower, um, this is how I made the corner L-shaped pieces of stone. And we'll just super glue those now to the corner. And it's really not a pain to go ahead and, and paint this again the same way we did the rest of the, the stonework because um, you're gonna just do it the same color anyway. So anything where you've touched um, paint that you've already done, no big deal. And again, this is to cover the seams up um, from the base and the corners of the walls as well. Now here I make uh, some 3mm LED diodes, flickering lights, totally awesome, wicked easy lights to, to put and install, it really enhances um, all of your builds. Um, so I like to put these in whenever I can. That washer there is uh, the base that the torch is going to be mounted to, so I'm just using that to measure where I need to put my hole to stick the LED light or the diode through the wall. You can uh, check above. Um, to check that video out. Um, it's a really good video and it shows you how to make those uh, flickering lights right there. And that's what the tower looks like when it's all done. All right, so the key takeaway here is to keep our builds as modular as possible. That way we're not going back and recreating the same thing twice if we don't have to. Take a look at my tavern build where the top half of that building can be used as a cottage all by itself. And the bottom half of my windmill build can be used as a building all by itself, let alone other things added to these as well to create a separate new structure. So with that, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around.